Hi everyone and welcome to this session where we'll be taking a look at the use of filters particularly in structural modelling and drafting and also we'll take a quick look at view templates as well. Um, this video tutorial was uh, really um, underpinning my blog so on, on revitstructureblog.wordpress.com I have a full set of notes for this tutorial. So what are view filters and how can they help us? Well I've got a fairly simple model set up here and you can see I've just got some structural walls modelled and what I'm doing here is actually showing different construction methods within each wall. So here I have in situ, slip formed and precast. Now traditionally what you may have done with this is gone in and um, overridden the graphics in the view for each element and then manually um, put some text on to um, show how these are actually constructed. But you can see here what I've actually got is parameters burnt into these objects. So if I select this wall here and we come into our properties palette, you can see I have a parameter here called construction and this one is slip formed. Now, if I change this, if I go through and select all of those walls there and I swap this out for perhaps precast, you can see Revit automatically changes everything and I don't know if you've noticed down here but you can see my schedule updating as well. So let's now have another go again. Uh, perhaps we'll now change this to in situ yeah, like this. And again, you can now see everything's updated and changed. So how's that working? Well, what I've actually done is I've used a view filter to accommodate this. So if I go into visibility graphics in here, click on filters, you can see I have various different filters set up. Now, we'll go through the process of creating all of these, uh, particularly for some structural framing. So I'm going to um, close down these views. So I'm going to open up a view for our steel work in here and I'm just going to go into one called design state. So I have some steel columns, steel beams and the first job for us really is to create a shared parameter that we can use for this. So if I go to the manage ribbon what we'll have on here are shared parameters and you can see I've already got one called designed so if I go into the properties of this Basically what I've done is I've created a shared parameter called designed, it's a custom discipline or common discipline and it's simply a yes no parameter so it's either on or off. Okay, now by making a shared parameter um, the actual project here doesn't know what I'm trying to do with it so what I have to do is I have to go to project parameters on the same ribbon just to register this shared parameter. And you can see I've got my construction one already in here. What I'm going to do here is click on add I'll go and find my shared parameter file and select that. So under analysis here is my design parameter so I'll use that. This particular one is going to be an instance and what I'm going to do with this is group it under structural analysis. Now on the right hand side of the dialog box this is how Revit's going to determine what categories this um, parameter is used within. So because I'm using it for um, checking a design status of a frame, what I'm going to do here is assign it to perhaps floors and then we'll go to structural columns, uh, foundations and framing in there and perhaps walls as well and I'll say OK. So what's that now done? Well if I select any object at random here and we go into the properties palette what you'll now see under structural analysis is I have this designed uh, checkbox currently it's not on or off it's in its uh, unchecked state so I can click it once and then start to see what's going on so what I'm going to do here is select these beams here because perhaps these have already been designed by the engineer and we'll also check some columns as well it might just be that the um, secondary system here and these bays haven't been designed yet. So I'm going to check on all of these and ask Revit to say that they're designed. Of course these ones over here won't be designed which is fine. Now what I want to do is I want to now make a view filter so I can very easily show the engineer what's been designed what hasn't been designed. So to do this I'll go into visibility graphics. Now you can either go to the view ribbon and choose visibility graphics or you can use the shortcut VV. So, you'll notice we have a filters tab and I'm going to click on this and now add a new filter. So I haven't got anything actually created there so the first job really I've got to do is make a new filter. So I'll click on edit new, make a new one and I'm going to call this one designed. Okay, so I've already used that one there, that's that one there, let me just delete that. Let's make another one, so designed. 
And now, once again, I can look at the categories that I want to apply this to. So it's going to be floors, it's going to be structural columns, structural foundations and framing, and walls. And then I can filter by designed. Yeah, because it's a shared parameter, I can obviously utilize this in schedules, filters, tags, and so on. And I want to say yes. So if it's designed, then apply whatever I'm going to do in the filter. So I'll say OK to this, and now I'll add that designed one in here. So very simply at this step, if I didn't want to see anything that was designed, I could simply control the visibility of it like this. Yeah. However, I want to see the objects, but I want to show them in a slightly different way. So I'm going to go to Patterns in here and make an override. So this will be green, and my pattern is going to be solid fill. So now that's added as an override. You can now see very easily that we can clearly see that on a filter. So if I pick another frame here, and we come along and say, OK, I've now um, designed that as well. As soon as I tick it, you can see now that colours up in green. Now one of the nice things with this is what we'll be able to do is capture this um, this uh, view, how it's set up, and save it as a view template. So I'm going to create the view template from a view. You can either do that by right mouse clicking over this, or you could use the drop down menu here as well. So I'll call this one uh, design, whoop, design state, perhaps. And you'll see in here that it's captured all the properties of this view. Now, in actual fact, I don't want to apply the scale and detail level and everything else. All I'm really interested in is capturing how the view looks. So in here, for example, we'll go to view filters. I want to capture that. And I also want to capture the model display. So I will say OK to this. And that's now captured. What does that actually mean? Well, if I go to a new 3D view now, and I want to now um, use that engineering designed view. I can right mouse on this, apply a view template, pick on design state, and there it is. Okay, so that's a um, typical way that we can actually uh, make use of the design state. If we go to some of these plans in here, you can again see I'm showing um, various different options here. And if I wanted to see that design state perhaps in plan, I could do that as well. So I could apply the view template. Uh, we could go into all here, pick on design state, and we can equally show that in plain. So, very powerful. Okay, thank you very much.